Chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics measures the speed of a reaction, the rate of reaction. Reaction rates depend upon the concentration of reactants, they depend upon the temperature, and they are affected by catalysts. The reaction rate can be measured by the decrease of a reactant concentration per unit time or the increase in product concentration per unit time. The units are molar concentration in moles per liter. The rate then is equal to molarity divided by seconds or moles per liter second. For a chemical reaction of A being converted to B, the rate is equal to the negative of the change in concentration of A over the time period delta T. Or the rate can be measured as the change in the concentration of B over the time period delta T. Notice that the disappearance of A is negative and the appearance of B is positive. This graphic shows A being converted to B. The black molecules are A, the red molecules are B. And with time, you see that the concentration of the black molecules decreases, as is shown in the graph, and the molecules, the red molecules, increase, as is shown in the graph. Consider this reaction, the dissociation of bromine by formic acid. The Br2 is dissociated into bromide ion, hydrogen ion, and CO2 is generated. Bromine is a red-brown liquid. With time, the solution loses its color and becomes colorless. This can be measured conveniently by spectrophotometry. Here a light source is passed through the solution and the detector measures the absorption. The change in concentration of bromine is directly proportional to the change in absorption. Here is the data for that reaction. We can measure the average rate, which is minus the change in bromine concentration over delta T. If we pick two points, the concentration of bromine final minus the concentration of bromine initial and divide it by the time final minus time initial, we can calculate the average rate. If we're interested in the instantaneous rate, we have to pick a point on the curve and evaluate that. It turns out by looking at the data, if we plot the rate in molar per second versus the concentration of bromine in molarity, that the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of bromine. We write that proportionality with a specific rate constant, small k. The rate then is equal to k times the concentration of bromine. If you want to evaluate the rate constant, you take the rate and divide it by the concentration of bromine. Let's see how stoichiometry affects reaction rate. Two moles of A are converted to B. If two moles of A disappear for each mole of B, then we have to account for the difference in the number of moles that we have. For A, the rate is equal to minus one-half the concentration change of A over the, con over the change in time, and the rate for B is the change in the concentration of B over the change in time. Notice that the coefficient 2 becomes 1 half. In general, this is the expression if you have coefficients. Notice that the reactants are all negative expressions and the products are positive expressions. The rate law for a hypothetical reaction a moles of A reacting with B moles of B to form C moles of C plus D moles of D is in general equal to K times the concentration of A raised to a power M times the concentration of B raised to a power N. The order is the sum of the exponents M plus N. The reaction order is determined by experiment you cannot get it from the stoichiometry. 
The rate law expresses the relationship of the rate of reaction to the rate constant and the concentration of the reactants raised to some powers. Again, that hypothetical reaction. The rate is going to be equal to K times the concentration of A to the X power times the concentration of B to the Y power. The reaction is X order in A and Y order in B. Overall, the reaction rate is A plus Y order. Let's do a calculation of an actual reaction. Fluorine reacts with 2 moles of ClO2 to generate 2 moles of FClO2. Here is the data that has been collected. We write the general expression. The rate is equal to K times the concentration of fluorine to the X power times the concentration of ClO2 to the Y power. We want to determine what X and Y are. If we look at experiment 1 and 3, we notice that the concentration of fluorine doubles with ClO2 remaining constant. The rate doubles. Therefore, X equals 1. If we look at experiments 1 and 2, we notice that ClO2 quadruples with F2 remaining constant. The rate quadruples. Y is equal to 1. Therefore, the rate is equal to K times the concentration of fluorine times the concentration of ClO2. We don't write the exponents 1.